few weeks ago, Dehance reached out to me to see if I'd be interested in providing an honest review of their plugin for DaVinci Resolve. So today I'm going to give you my initial thoughts on the plugin after getting to use it extensively over the last few weeks, along with some insights on how I've been using it to complement my existing workflow in DaVinci. If you'd like to pick up Dehancer for yourself, there's a link to their website in the description box below and you can use the code KEYS to get 10% off your purchase. If you've followed this channel for any amount of time, you'll probably know that the original BMPCC holds a very special place in my heart and so I was excited to try out the plugin with the ProRes footage coming straight out of the camera. One big benefit of using a plugin like Dehancer is having complete control over multiple parameters in one single node. I tend to use these sorts of tools to subtly enhance my grades and whilst I've only been using this for a short while, so far I've been incredibly impressed with the outputs. Being honest, I definitely think I can get pretty close to the same sorts of looks using the proprietary tools in DaVinci, but there are a number of features in Dehancer that really do help take your footage to the next level when trying to achieve a film look. This is clearly an incredibly powerful tool and whilst it will take me a little while longer to really push it to its limits, here's a quick breakdown of the way I've been using it and also some of the features I like the most. When it comes to my node structure, I'm keeping it pretty basic with just four nodes. An exposure and white balance adjustment, a contrast node, the Dehancer plugin, and a sharpening node. After playing around with the settings in the input panel, I've settled on using the DaVinci Wide Gamut 709 color space for the Ceiling Light D footage from the Lumix, and using the Blackmagic 4K profile for the original BMPCC, since there isn't yet a dedicated profile, and I found that this one still works really well. I like to work pretty quickly when grading my images, and so I've created a few power grades from specific looks and film stocks that I've taken a liking to. I'll generally apply a power grade to my clip and then make some small adjustments to some of the panel settings to account for the nuances of each scene, but for the purposes of this video, I'll show you how I went about creating these looks in the first place. The first thing I like to do is turn off the grain since I like to focus on the color and contrast of the image before applying any additional texture. From here, I focus on a few specific panels to get the image most of the way there, first adjusting exposure and color temperature, and then moving on to select my film stock. There's lots of different choices here, but so far I've been really impressed with both CineSteel 50D and Kodak Vision 350D for daylight scenes. I'll select CineSteel for this specific clip. Next, I'll jump down to the print tab, which as the name suggests, simulates the printing of the film negative onto photographic paper. This is an amazing feature in the Dehancer toolset, and since this has a pretty fundamental effect on the look of the image, I like to make my selections in here before moving on to the other modules. For negative film stocks, I've been absolutely loving the Kodak Endura profile, which adds an amazing sheen to the image and some additional contrast. I'll lower the tonal contrast here slightly just to account for this scene, and I'll also add some color density to deepen the reds on the buses. Next, I'll go into the film compression panel, which really has been a standout feature for me. If you've watched some of my earlier videos, you'll know I'm pretty obsessed with highlight rendition, since harsh highlights are often one of the most obvious signs that an image has been captured with a digital camera. The film compression panel addresses highlights in an image and helps redistribute them towards the mid-tone area, which is incredibly powerful, and I found myself using it a lot. For this specific clip, I won't amend the white points since there aren't any areas of pure white. I'm just going to adjust the tonal range to control the sky. Now I'll move on to the film developer panel, which I'll be using to add some additional micro contrast to the image and also some saturation to the primary colors in the image. I love film looks where the primary colors are dense, but not too overly saturated. So the changes I'm making here are still quite subtle, but if I do a before and after, you can see that this adds some really nice depth to the colors. Lastly, I'll add some grain and halation to finish things off. The grain panel allows for much more control than an overlay, but it definitely took me a little while to get it right. Like many film characteristics, it's really easy to overdo this. 
and it seems like no matter what I tried, I wasn't able to get the negative option to look natural. So currently I'm opting for the positive film grain option, which provides much more of a subtle grain rendition and I'll adjust my sliders so that it's much more prevalent in the shadows and less prevalent in the highlights. Something like that looks good to me and I'll also reduce the amount until it looks natural. The halation panel has got a lot going on and this is also something I see often being overdone but one feature that makes this really easy to navigate is the mask box which I'll tick and as you can see it gives you a good indication of how your selections are affecting the halation of the highlights in the image. If I reduce the source limiter you can see that this eventually exposes the areas in the highlights that are being affected by the mask. I like the effect to be limited to only the brightest parts of the image, so I'll amend my selection until I'm happy with the overall result. Something like that looks good for me, and I'll undo the mask. At this point I like to make some final adjustments to the lift, gamma and gain wheels in my first adjustment node, just to tidy up the exposure and white balance, and then I'm done. And here's a quick before and after. So in terms of my concluding thoughts, I think simulating film is tough, and some might say it's even impossible. Whilst I don't think that any kind of plugin is going to magically make your digital footage look identical to film, I do think Dehancer gets you pretty close. And I definitely think it adds an enormous amount of value in terms of expediting the colour grading workflow. I know that the Dehancer team are constantly making improvements to the product, and so I'm really excited to see what's on the horizon in terms of features and functionality for the plugin. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.